asyncletism. Before we proceed with the definition of asyncletism, let us first define what syncletism means. So syncretism is also known as parallelism. So to be parallel means to be occurring side by side each other with almost equal distances between each other. Asyncletism, on the other hand, would be the absence of parallelism. So to further understand what asyncletism means, we have to be familiar with these three structures in the maternal pelvis and the fetus. First is the sacral promontory, so it will be posterior in location. Next is the symphysis pubis, it will be anterior in position, meaning towards the front. And thirdly, would be the sagittal suture of the fetal head. So again, the sacral promontory, which is located posteriorly or towards the back, Next is the symphysis pubis, which is located anteriorly or towards the front, and the sagittal suture of the baby. So take note that they are almost occurring in parallel, meaning they are in line with each other. So this is normal syncretism. If we try to draw a line, just like what's shown in the first slide, it would be parallel. Okay? They are parallel to each other and almost equal distances between each other. So this one is important because this will be uh, more favorable so that the baby can be delivered spontaneously without any difficulties during labor. So what is asyncletism this time? In obstetrics, it's defined as lateral deflection of the sagittal suture anteriorly or posteriorly in the maternal pelvis. Again, it's the lateral deflection of the sagittal suture, whether it be to a more anterior or to a more posterior position in the maternal pelvis. So let us try to define it using this picture. It's defined as the lateral deflection of the sagittal suture. So as opposed to the first picture, you would take note that the sagittal suture is no longer midway in location. In the picture shown before, it is midway here and with equal distances between the sacral promontory and the symphysis pubis. But this time, it will be deflected to a more posterior position. So it's deflected towards the sacral promontory. And if we try to draw a line, it will no longer be occurring alongside each other and the distance between each other will no longer be equal as well. So in another picture, okay, the sagittal suture now has deflected anteriorly. Thereby, again, the parallelism is already absent. So asyncletism can be defined, I mean, can be further classified into anterior or posterior. So anterior asyncletism, it's more of the sagittal suture is deflected towards the posterior part so that the presenting portion will be the anterior parietal bone of the baby. Again, the basis of naming it as anterior would be on what is the presenting parietal bone. So in this case, it, this will be the anterior and this will be the posterior. So a posteriorly deflected um, sagittal suture will result to the anterior parietal bone to be presenting first. So in this case, the sagittal suture is anteriorly deflected. It's deflected towards the symphysis pubis which makes the posterior parietal bone as the foremost presenting part. Thus, this will be the posterior asyncletism. So the question is, would it be possible for a normal labor to occur even if asyncletism is present? The answer is yes, as long as the degree of asyncletism is just moderate. Or, in other words, it would allow successive shifting of the sagittal suture from anterior to posterior, posterior to anterior, 
So this successive shifting will allow the fetal head to still move or negotiate within the maternal pelvis. On the other hand, if the degree of asyncretism is severe or the sagittal suture is just severely impacted towards the anterior or towards the symphysis pubis or towards the sacral promontory, then the baby would have a problem with descent because it will be impacted to these structures. Just to summarize, it is important that the sagittal suture is located midway between the symphysis pubis and sacral promontory so that normal labor will occur. If the sagittal suture is deflected, whether it be to a more anterior or to a more posterior position, that will result to asyncretism and eventually will lead to a difficult labor. Asyncretism can be classified into anterior or posterior based on which part of the parietal bone will be presenting first. It's still possible to proceed with the normal labor even if asyncretism is present as long as it's just moderate degree of asyncretism.